All right, so welcome back to one class. Again, my name is Joey. I'm going to be your math teacher for this session. So uh, if you're here for the first time, thank you so much for watching. What we're doing here at one class is we are providing online resources and videos um, basically uh, for all students and all learners. And what we're doing is we are here at one class. What we're doing in this session is we're verifying solutions to frequently asked questions in secondary level and university and college level mathematics and in chemistry. So my job here today is I'm going to verify some solutions for you. I have about 10 questions that range from basically grade 10 math all the way to grade 12 calculus. So we're going to go over the questions. I'm going to teach you the concepts behind those questions. And we're going to break the solution down from uh, uh, by parts to uh, hopefully get through uh, to you guys about what the uh, what the uh, what uh, what the thinking behind the the thinking behind the question is and what the rationale in answering the question is. So uh, my name is Joey. I'm currently a secondary school educator in Ontario. My specialized subjects and my teachable subjects are indeed chemistry and math. So I'll be able to help you out uh, through this journey of answering questions. So without further ado, let's get started on today's problems. I have 10 and or I think I have 11 of them um, throughout uh, through in this in this uh, kind of a collection of questions here. So let's look at number one here. I'll give you some time to think about this question as well. So it says here, the sequence is defined by the formula f, n, f of n plus 1 equals f of n minus 3. If, n, if f of 4 is 22, what is f of 1? So let's look at the question here. It's asking us, if f of n plus 1, sorry, f of n plus 1 equals f of n minus 3. That's against if, if f of 4 is 22, what is f of 1? So I'll give you a moment to think about this problem here. Uh, this here is, uh, we're talking, we're in, the, we're in this concept of uh, arithmetic and geometric sequences in series, right? So uh, you can think of it as sequences. See, uh, this is a specifically a sequence, so a sequence. And then you can think of it as arithmetic or geometric. In this case, it would be arithmetic sequence specifically. But we're in this idea of sequences in series, how, where the one term would affect the next term, the next term, and so on and so forth. So we have a sequence here, and this is kind of our sequence, um, our arithmetic sequence here. We're given f of 4 is equal to 22. We have to find what is f of 1. So I'll give you a moment to think about this question. And then we will reconvene and answer and hope and look at the question as well. If you're stuck, you can always look at see what the sample solution as well to see um, to see uh, how you would get uh, this problem here. So or how do you answer this problem here? So um, give you a moment to think about this problem, and then we will uh, we will we will answer it uh, in quickly as well. So let's think about this problem and let's break it down into a couple parts here. So we have f of 4 equals 22, and um, and we can actually sub f of 4 in for n f plus 1, right? So if we know that f of 4 is 22, we can say that um, we can say that here uh, <coughs> this is, this is simply just um, f of 4 here is simply just 3 plus 1, right? So we know that n here would equal t uh, 3 in this case. So I'm saying here if n equals 3. Therefore, and we're given we're given f of three plus one, which is four, equals f of three. F of three minus three, right? <clears throat> three minus three, right? And we got f of four here equals f of three minus three. We know f of four here is twenty-two, right? As given in our sample here, so it says t a twenty-two is f of three minus three here. So we're gonna work backwards, and we're gonna figure out what f of three is from f of four. So f of 3 here is simply, or 22 here, is equal to f of 3 
minus three, right? And we can move three to the other side to add three to both sides. We'd get f of three here would equal 25, right? So we have 25 for f of three, which is good. And now what we can do is we can, uh, we can solve for if n equals two, right? Because if I have here n equals two, then we have um, f of two, well, let me do some black, sorry. We have f of two plus one, which is three, and we know that. So f of two plus one equals f of two minus three, right? And we know that f of two plus three, two plus one equals f of three, equals um, f of two minus three. And we know that f of three here is uh, 25 and equals f of two minus three, add three to both sides. So therefore f of two would equal 28, right? f of two here would be 28. So we see some sort of pattern here, right? Or I hope, hopefully you see some sort of pattern here. We have f of three is 25 here. <coughs> Sorry, f of three here is 25, f of two is 28 here, and we started with f of four here equals 22, right? f of four here is 22. So we're, try we're trying to find what f of one is, right? So as you can see, 22, 25, and 28, as you see, my, my numbers are increasing by three, right? As denoted by f and minus three here. This negative three is simply because if we're because we're going backwards, we're adding three to these numbers here. We're going forward to one and not one to four here. So from four, three, two, and then one, we are adding three to both sides. So therefore, if I were to solve for f of one, so therefore, oh, box mode still. Uh, therefore, if I'm still at f of one here, if I'm adding three to both sides to uh, every time I, I drop the number by, uh, I drop n by one, obviously f of one would equal 31, right? And I can prove that. I can prove that by saying if here n equals one here, then I have here f of one plus one is f of one minus three, right? If n here equals one. And I know f of two is 28, right? This is f of two. Um, equals f of 1 minus 3. I know f of 2 here is 28, right? 28 would equal f of 1 minus 3. I can then add 3 to both sides. Again, I, at last, I would get f of 1 here would equal 31 here. And this here is my answer for this problem. f of 1 here is 31. And as you can see, they also got the same number, f of 1 equals 31. They basically did the exact same thing, but they, um, they, wrote, they wrote it in... Uh, they wrote it so that uh, they're substituting again. Uh, they're so they're solving for n here equals one um, through n, uh, kind of using this similar concept. So they assumed here n equals three, and then n equals two, and then n equals one, and they finally found what f equals one here is in this case. So in this case, the solution is correct. Solution is correct. Good analysis here.